From Alpha City, the home of the superhero, comes the only news program that gives you all the super news all the time. Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Greetings, Alpha Citizens. This is Craig Allen for Alpha City News. The Yards had a very strange day yesterday as a pair of villains made an attempt to rob the least likely place this reporter can imagine, the Hidden House. This gothic, tree-choked mansion, legendary for its mystic wandering, now sits on the bloody red acre in the yards, and serves as the base for the magical hero, Presto the Witch, the current spell magister of our world. The attack began just after midday, with Glamazon, wielding a long staff which spat cold white fire, setting the gnarled trees at the front of the hidden house ablaze. Glamazon, seven feet tall, olive-skinned, with short, lustrous black hair and a distinctive Mongolian cast to her features, appeared in the yards riding a brute war pony with eyes as black as night. Her thundering gallop took her quickly to the bloody red acre, where her horse reared up on two legs in front of the hidden house, and Glamazon bellowed something in her native language presumably a challenge to Presto. She then began using the inky staff to send gouts of pale fire into the close growing oaks that cloak the hidden house from view. As Glamazon began to repeat her war cry, Presto made her presence known, throwing herself in front of the villain's next blast of flame, shielding the trees and herself with a wall of eldritch energy. In short order, the Mistress of Magic had unhorsed her opponent, causing the black-eyed beast to vanish in a puff of noxious smoke. Presto, having faced Glamazon in the past, wisely kept her distance from her more physical rival, using her superior knowledge of magic to use the flames of Glamazon's staff against her, channeling every new blast from it, either harmlessly into the air or back at the villain herself. Glamazon, however, shrugged off each attack and finally, blinding Presto with fire, managed to get within grappling distance of the hero. And grapple she did. Using a grip of iron, Glamazon took hold of the floating hero's ankle and pulled Presto down into a punishing bear hug strong enough that onlookers claim they could hear Presto's ribs creak. As if Presto's situation wasn't dire enough, a second antagonist appeared. A floating, cackling apparition drawn from hellish Halloween nightmare known only as Witchfinger, presumably for the necklace of severed fingers she wears around her neck, took advantage of Presto's dire situation. Floating in the air, upon what was described as an uprooted stump with roots that cut and clawed at the air, clutching an old wooden broomstick in her left hand, the evil sorceress declared that she had taken control of the hidden house and would be using it as her base to spread darkness over the entire world. Her tirade was interrupted, though, when... After depositing Presto's struggling form into the grasp of the floating stump's roots, Glamazon demanded that Witchfinger give her the payment they had agreed upon for her help in distracting Presto. Bystanders, already taken aback, were even more shocked when Witchfinger instead caused a hole to the underworld to open beneath Glamazon's feet allowing the statuesque warrior to be pulled away by a horde of screaming shadows. As the crone cackled over the betrayal of her erstwhile ally, all the while repeating the phrase, It's mine! It's mine! The hidden house is mine! Evidence began to mount that her victory was to be quite temporary. With her attention focused on lording Presto's powerlessness over her, Witchfinger failed to notice that the Hidden House itself had begun to take an interest in the melee that had been going on in front of it. 
seeming to loom even more menacingly than normal. The force of the hidden house made by the very trees which surrounded itself move, tearing themselves from the ground. Before Witchfinger could react, she was surrounded by mobile trees whose roots and branches enmesh her and her floating platform. As Witchfinger and Presto disappeared behind the wall of moving foliage, the house itself began to stretch and deform, moving to cover the entire affair, forming a dome of wood that blocked the view of all bystanders. Silence fell for a moment only to be torn asunder by the sounds of an unholy scream, accompanied by intensely bright light which shone out between the cracks of the wooden boards hiding the scene, blinding all who watched. When the light faded, Presto was seen standing, shaken, just inside the gate of the iron fence girding the edge of the property, with house and trees restored to their normal, if off-putting, appearance as though nothing had at all had occurred. The only change was the presence of a new statue, depicting Witchfinger standing upon a rock cut in the shape of a stump, supported by stone roots driven into the ground, and a look of unimaginable horror upon her face. Presto is reported to be resting after her ordeal. The whereabouts of Glamazon are unknown. A new exhibit has opened this week at the Museum of Super History. Titled Metal Men and Iron Ingenuity, it covers some of the amazing uses of armor over the course of history. Beginning with a collection of for the time advanced armor from the Deep Hyborian Age, some of which seem to have been at one time enchanted to move on their own without any occupants, The collection includes pieces ranging from ancient Hebrew metal golems to the plate armor of the legendary Invisible Knight, the unbreakable armor of Roland and his fellow paladins, up to the remains of the first true power armors, the Monitor and the Merrimack, which fought each other to a standstill during the American Civil War, as well as the Main, cast from the remains of the ship whose destruction led to the Spanish-American War. The centerpiece of the exhibit, though, is the newly restored battle suit known as the Z-1 Missile Man. The creation of the Z-1 suit began in the late 1940s, when the American government began experimenting with the technology developed by both the Japanese and German military forces during World War II. Bringing together the fruits of insight from both the Axis and Allied powers allowed the Z-1 Missile Man to be deployed in the last days of the Korean War, and was the linchpin of General Douglas MacArthur's strategy to pursue the Communist Army north of the 38th parallel. Though the removal of General MacArthur by President Truman and the signing of the ceasefire in Korea ended the use of the Z-1 in Asia, Over the course of the next decade, the Missile Man was deployed to defend America and the world from various threats to its existence, always piloted by Lieutenant, eventually Major, James Keller. Though the Z-1 was touted by the American military as a possible alternative to the creation of a force of intercontinental nuclear ballistic missiles, the disappearance of Dr. Vigo Bartes and his team of scientists the mines central to the design and creation of the Missile Man suit in 1954 ended that plan. Nine years later, James Keller and the Z-1 suit itself were lost amid rumors that the much-decorated military hero had absconded with the suit, possibly defecting to the other side of the Iron Curtain. Although the expected onslaught of Russian-made Z-1 knockoff suits never occurred. The truth about what happened to the Z-1 and its pilot only came to light last year, when Radiant and Captain Valor defeated the last vestiges of the Cobalt Terror Organization. Active since the 1960s, Cobalt was discovered to have been created by the same Dr. Barthes who had been instrumental in creating the Z-1 suit. Major Keller had discovered that Barthes and Cobalt had intended to use an army of robotic soldiers based off of the Z-1 suit to conquer the world, 
and the Major had gone underground to fight the organization. His lonely mission had come to a head in combat between himself and Barthes, armed with scientific devices of his own creation. Though the Major emerged victorious from the fight, Barthes's dying action had been to seal the two of them into an inescapable vault, where the Major soon succumbed to his own injuries, and the Z-1 suit had lain, damaged beyond repair, for more than half a century. Major Keller was finally posthumously cleared of any charges of treason and desertion, and given a hero's funeral which he richly deserved. While the Missile Man suit had been turned over to the faculty of the Eisner University Super Engineering Department for study. Their study concluded the suit was loaned to the Museum of Super History for this display. Running for the next three months, it is worth the time to go and see an exhibition of such amazing examples of heroic history. We here at ACN heartily recommend it. This has been Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Alpha City News is produced by Carter Lee. Sound beds are provided by newsbeds.com. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions, please share them with us at alphacitynews at gmail.com. You can download us on iTunes, at Stitcher, at Libsyn, or on SoundCloud, and find us at wordpress.com under Alpha City News. We thank you for listening, and we hope you have a super day, Alpha Citizen.